joy to hear everyone speak this evening to feel like I was in the same room as these incredible writers um, so the book is about Francis Bacon lying dying reckoning with himself and his work um, and it tries to create a painterly surface with language therefore busy with lots of other ideas and history and memory and delusion and sex and practicalities physical things so it's a kind of sensory essay and for 5 by 15 um, I've translated it outwards um, further down the line or backwards to the point of encounter between a viewer and a work of art in real time with all the other rubbish that goes on uh, in one's own mind or, or in the room that one is in. Uh, and 5 by 15 have very kindly let me cheat a bit uh, and use notes so that I can um, whip along at the speed of thought or um, a bit faster even to create this kind of hyperbolic um, uh, encounter between myself and Francis Bacon. So this is me and this took place on Saturday the 18th of May 2019 in the Minneapolis Institute of Art at about four o'clock in the afternoon. I was supposed to be at Fiona's at six. I am supposed to be at Fiona's at six. I should turn my phone on and check the time actually, but I need a wee and my knees hurt. I think I've ticked my culture box. I think I'll just check this last room, the middle room here, and then, ooh, crikey, Mikey, don't look now. Ooh, get in, straight ahead. There's a smack bang, middle of the fifties, iconic screaming bacon on that wall. Ooh. Hello, ducky. Thank God is my first thought. I need a wee is my second thought. A familiar face or a half face, an X face, a not face is my kind of deja vu, looping familiar afterthought. Whoa, would you look at that? It's an act of aggression against the idea of faces. I feel I'm at home in room 376 of this foreign museum. The screaming man could be David, Silve could be David Sylvester, could be a Pope teeth eyelids, ear, collar, the white on that collar. It could be a hug from a long lost friend. I'm so happy to see it. God, I'm really bursting through the, it's boiling in here. I wonder if they do sandwiches down here. Let's get a look at you. Oh, yes, mate. I've seen three or four of these from this series in the wild, but this is a really good one. So jet lag, jet lag makes me feel completely mad. It, it affects my belly. I feel confused and emotionally strung out and I, said goodbye to my wife in New York and I was then up drinking till 4am with the playwright and then my tenses started to be scrambled to so kind of before and after and I've been awake since maybe since I saw this painting in 1996 and then I was just crying in a diner and crying for no other reason and the whole thing was so emotional and I was so nervous and being away is so strange and, and then I went to the gala and I made my earnest speech and I met the famous poet and I was dressed like an estate agent in my shitty cheap suit and my crumpled shirt very bacon to be a snob about the cut of a suit oh Francis year after year have I seen this painting before? Seeing this painting racked with a kind of political anger, rage, frustration, and no, 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 no. That was my previous visit to Minneapolis. Never to be forgotten because it was the 24th of June, 2016, the day after the Brexit vote. I'd been out with Marlon James. He'd said, oh God, I'm sorry, as he slid his phone over with the results of the referendum. And here I am name dropping, a very Francis Bacon thing to do. So did I mention I was with Marlon James? And suddenly in the gallery with the memory of Marlon James and the painting by Francis Bacon, I'm feeling a kind of rushing schadenfreude towards these corrupt Babylon puppets made of Fortnum and Mason smoked eaten pate despicable fucks as I would say. Ha ha Francis you are too much. I should turn my phone on and check the time because I'm supposed to be at Fiona's at six but I suddenly feel with this kind of rushing desire to see them howling shame ripped disintegrated in the way he can disintegrate a person by horror at their own sickening sterling deranged moral abjection livid strapped in a chair all Bacon's popes like Alton Towers roller coaster pants shitters just the right side of funny not at all funny clinging to their fragile shadows and their fake chairs but it's history that's got got to them not heights not speed not shame mortality a screaming hunk of self-imitating establishment meat always think of bacon when i look at westminster 
abattoir for decency, screaming at Princess Margaret from the back of the room, rubbish, boo, like Bacon did. Bacon did that. You wouldn't ordinarily want to hurt a person's feelings, but these aren't persons, they're ghouls, they're props, stooges, zombies. Also, Princess Margaret couldn't sing. As we all know, she can't even bloody sing, as we all know. No, they're not even proper crooks. We love a proper crook, don't we, darling? Maybe it's the sheer joy of stumbling on a bacon this far from home, but I'm electrified, and I think of the series, this is probably the second best. Nostalgia's all over me like white spirit. I could go up in flames. Some of them were rubbish. He didn't wash the face out enough in some of them. There's a delirious desire to try and transpose this into prose. How would it be if I did that? Not like the Deleuze book, which is all kind of theory and control. Could it be done from the body? not from the mind. It would need to be very thick with his clever tricks, which is what he was. He was a clever trickster of interiors. The eighth one with the hands, that's a terrible picture. I hate that picture. God, I need a wee. God, it's boiling in here. God, snazzy chinos. God, I love American museums. When did he start selling them to American museums? I wonder if there's a loo on this floor. These ones, these are the start of Bacon's kind of self-imitation game. They're too close to fleshy, they're too cute. God, have I seen this picture before? Do they do sandwiches in here? Bacon loved Paris and Monte Carlo and Madrid. God, I love Europe. Have I seen this painting before? Have I been here before, racked with political anger and rage and frustration? Was it Bacon who sat with Jane Bowles while she died in Tangier? I should turn on my phone. I'm supposed to be at Fiona's at six. Not the institution, but the countries, the continent that we are in, the places, the cities, the people, our friends, the music, the painting, the food. God, I'm so hungry. God, someone, someone's farted. This not being England. I'm away from England, the fear of what we're becoming, the English. But it wasn't then, it was this year. It was last year. It was, Christ, who stole a year? My knees are really sore after that walk. That woman's shoes are squeaking, just like a little hamster. In the same way we cannot ever look at a Velasquez Pope and not see a bacon tearing through. That's what history does. It tears through itself again and again. And in that exact same way, just as I cannot imagine now, that then I was 14 blocks north of East 38th and Chicago Avenue, which is where George Floyd was murdered. But that's the future, tearing through my memory of that day, like the screaming 20th century rips through a Raphael or a Tintoretto. Now, when we look back again, Again, when the represented event reminds us of the great machinery of pain or everyday murder by the state or the church again and again and again and again. God, that woman's shoe is making the strangest squeaking noise. But it was one year and seven days later that they killed George Floyd. So I couldn't have been thinking of him, but I know we discussed those deaths with my hosts. We talked about the relationship between art and death, which makes a change, and we talked about breath. American death. And I know I asked about the strip bar and that guy being hauled out and how upset I was. And they said such things happen every day in this city. And I know we joked about buying lunch from Whole Foods and gentrification and Berryman jumping off the Mississippi Bridge and Twin City rap and trap and how hip hop is the only living art form in the Bezos gilded throne room of exploitation. And this was all very bacon, but I hadn't seen the bacon yet. Bezos screaming past his first trillion playing aeroplane cockfights above the burning cities. Everything is very bacon when you're standing looking at bacon, like he ripped that particular image out of a magazine printed 30 years after his death but I hadn't even seen it yet I hadn't been in room 376 yet I'm just still walking around this huge gridded city and I was thinking about the death of Prince a year before or even the year after the coming winter when Prince would die the everlasting life of Prince the never-ending death of Francis Bacon I was thinking about iron and grief because I was craving spinach and family and because he hadn't seen it yet, but he knew a thing or two about atrocity and my guts were crook. God, that woman's squeaky shoe. Can someone please lubricate that lady's sneaker? Screaming lost, sickening tourist on the loo, screaming George Dyer on the toilet or Muriel on the circle sofa or Innocent the 10th on the papal throne or Eric on the pavement saying, I can't breathe. Or Francis in the room in Madrid saying, I can't breathe. Or every living animal in the greenhouse, hot shot to bits planet saying, we can't breathe. Fuck, I should turn on my phone and check the time. Or Harriet cut in half on the massage table, I remember that one. Or the late ball peering in, no, I can't have been thinking of that one because I only found that picture recently. I'm still in the past, representing myself, looking, thinking badly. Actually, I haven't even started thinking about this yet. I thought about it a lot when I was a teenager, but I don't think I've started thinking what would it be like if I wrote a book about this now and how it would have to be a kind of painful reading experience. People would possibly hate it. 
if it worked properly, it would have to be sticky and nasty, a kind of surface bursting full of itself, and then suddenly cuddly and kind of ultimately vicious. And I can't really imagine Faber being happy about that. I can't imagine how good this picture looked when it was all black and all he'd done is block in the white lines, the perspectival cage. And I wonder if it's an empty set. And I guess that's related to the scale of a painter or a lover being alone, painting alone like this, the sense of a different, less disturbing face behind the white one, someone asking nicer questions than Bacon is asking himself, someone like David Sylvester, like forgiveness, which is like a bad dream on a black background, which is like number seven in this series, which is in MoMA, is that the one I really liked with both rows of teeth? Have I seen this one before where he really gets the scream? Like, you can hear it. Like, it comes at you like architecture and props, very lightly done, just single lines with a steady brush. You cannot look at that line and not lose your mind at how he handled paint. Teeth that will keep biting after rigor mortis, bite fresh as 50 sickness, granddad molars. He is all unease, all space. He's a carver. He's a virtuoso surgeon of emptiness. This is why reproductions of bacon are so laughable. You have to stand right next to me here in Minneapolis. Smell me. Ask if I can smell cedar or bergamot, I can, I can smell cedar, or bergamot, it's that man, it's that real man, opposite that unreal man, the painted, not painted, death mask of Blake, painted orange murder mask of Trump, this was back then, and I'd say, look at that line, compare that to number five, which you hate, God, my knees are hurting, cartilage, ligaments, narrow bones, sockets, marrow bones, grinding yellow thickness of feeling, looking harder at it, oil paint, rags, white spirit, terps, gold, velvet, incense, weird scraping, squeaking noise in my head, that could just be the jet lag, naked foot in sneaker, squeaking, that woman's foot, oh, the way that yellow bunches at the first application like a mistake, like ecstasy, like a forever popping, electrifying, fancy a person finding their medium, like Francis Bacon found oil paint, fading, 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 straight like a machine did it, glitched like a man did it, copying himself thinking money in the bank, that's how I can make what I need to make, God I need a way but I can't quite bring myself to leave this painting, it makes me think about honesty and value, for some reason this one makes me think of Rupert Murdoch, what now old fella? Screaming old man, packing power and banknotes into a carry-on suitcase for the final journey, richer and more pointlessly powerful for the big deathbed interview. That'll make you scream on your throne. And I was wondering, when did Bacon start selling these paintings to America? So I checked the wall text and then I did a thing which I do before I kind of erupted into this weird Cod Beckett two actors on a stage internal monologue with myself. When I see a Bacon in the wild, I leave the room and pretend I haven't seen it. And I need to sit down. So perhaps if that old man would vacate that bench, I could do that. And now consider me, 4,007 miles from home, trapped in the year before my dad was born, five years before my mum was born, one dead dad on the overseas floor, Quaker pain, angina disaster, Francis cough, cough, cough in the air raid, good early learning with the stable mates, Francis cough, cough, cough in the clinic, fakey cakey masks, toggle off old power, I'm hungry, I wonder if the cafe is open, do they even do sandwiches here? Anglo-Irish painter, American philanthropy, 307 days before George Floyd is killed, 14 blocks south from here, re-enter the painting, Trump calling white supremacists very fine people, re-enter 2019, Reese Mogg lying laughing on the green bench at the idea of children starving in this country, very, very bacon, odalisque with bloody hands, throwback antique ghastly Mobius strip of meeting and re-meeting an image like this, set against the newsreel a year before, a year after, should I turn on my phone and check the time? One in a series of eight, some crap, some genius, misremembering, remembering, have I been here before? Have I said all this to you before? Was I saying it about Crow? Show my workings, step aside inside another image, excuse me, cultured Minneapolitans, I'm here to see my screaming accomplice, my pal, my good personal friend, study for portrait six from 1953. We are old friends, you see. Budge over, smelly bergamot man. My friend and I have a time travel argument in the diary because neither of us have been here before, but the world would erupt in a storm of purple velvet and scorched dead cod side like fesh if either of us were to admit it. But first, because this is bacon, be polite. Hello, you lovely thing. You gorgeous, nasty bastard, you perfectly horrible dental hygiene advert, stolen composition, stately, brazenly fake fancy us meeting here in your simulacra chamber in my head, in this neutral ground. I love your bright white collar. Thank you, dear. I love the white perspectival nothing room, joke room, cheat room, ante room, gesture room, you cello gag, I tear snag, he's screaming because you trapped him, smeared him, whacked him, attacked him with a smelly rag, you old wag.
God, it's good to see you. I adore how still you seem. Maybe I should be getting going. I have to be at Fiona's at six. No movement after all. Stone cold, frozen still like a topside in there in the freezer. Those YBAs who ripped you off thought it was all about living things made dead. But actually you were making dead things tricky living. Clever game for a morbid git. I should turn my phone on and check the time. God, I need a wee. And it doesn't take much. I've just come from room 200, where Kondo Takahiro's cowboy blue Buddha drips and dries and cries, perpetually melting and drying in nuclear rain. And that is a conversation with material. Yours, Francis, is just a kind of lazy note to self, the European representational self, drenched in blood, exported, plucked from the very shallow plate of your life and mine. And I've lost track of time asking what it is that Bacon does. Do your knees hurt? Are you ashamed? Are you hungry? Are you horny? I should turn my phone on. I'm going to be late for Fiona's. All this weird, weird human life behind glass in this country, on this planet, illusion, agony, things made of oil, metal, relics, weapons, casualties, very old fashioned, he always was. Save me from the ugly British mess. Give me some wide open Agnes Martin grids in the desert. Give me Martha, give me solar wit, give me queen minimalism and some melatonin gummies for my restless American nights. Make me not English for a little bit, I beg you, or I will scream and scream like Veruca Salt. Close personal friend of Francis Bacon, Roald Dahl, commonly known fact, and I'm hungry now, nostalgic, weepy, yearning for a good biography, a good 800 page biography of that fucker. My whole face is itchy with deja vu and unease about Francis Bacon and the future is hideous and the glass is so shiny and I miss smoking and I miss long argumentative drunk interviews between famous painters and intelligent TV hosts and I liked it when I had a big juicy death scandal secret with macabre taboo drops popping between the shamed and the naive and I wonder what time this gallery even closes. How long have I even been here? And I wonder if I could write about this and what would that need to be like? I'm supposed to be at Fiona's for six and the man that smells of bergamot taps me on the shoulder and I turn and for a second he has the same screaming white emptied unface of the painting and I yell Wah! but that's not it's just my retina tricking me it's just my brain tricking me it's just Francis Bacon's paintings tricking me making fake noise in my head trying to add to the great effect bravo I bravo jet lag bravo Francis Bacon I just slipped and stumbled out of the polite confrontational norms within this strange ritual of looking at painted meaning rich surfaces fast forward and then yanked back no man in the room just ourselves disappointing failing curious interested stimulate me later confusable shouldn't you be going you late morbid tourist, you liberal snowflake melting for a cry on the wide streets of this foreign city because capitalism is so cruel. Wah! Buckle up, wimpy kid. Rip that face off. This is indeed the world you live in. And the reason you like these paintings is because they get at it. The reason you should write about that. And if people think it's nasty, alienating shit, then great. Pretentious, moi. Francis, they don't coolly appraise, they get at it and they try really hard and then they stop trying and then they remember why they were trying and they try again and Francis is saying, do it darling, but you have to be at Fiona's at six. Terribly rude to be late, especially when they're putting you up. You're just saying, are you all right? Seen anything good? Did you see my painting in room 376? Is it still working? Does it still hurt? Because you have a ritual, don't you? When you see one of my paintings overseas, you stop, you pretend to leave, you go in again. Does it hurt? Yes, it still hurts. You leave, you turn away, you go in. When you meet a bacon, you have a ritual. Again, leave, go back in. Does it still hurt? Yes, it still hurts. Look again, then leave.